everybody. My name is Andy Ulau. Uh, I grew up in the New York City area where I spent my entire professional career playing double bass and electric bass in a wide variety of settings and playing all the different kinds of music that are in New York City, such as classical, jazz, Latin jazz, Brazilian jazz. I've played uh, Portuguese fado. I've played uh, Broadway shows, of course, and a lot of uh, off-Broadway shows, cabaret gigs, uh, pretty much uh, recording sessions, of course, also commercials. And uh, started playing professionally when I was 19 while I was in undergrad school at the conservatory. And I did study, uh, got my gra graduate degree from North Texas State in Denton. At the time it was called the University of North Texas. No, now it's called the University of North Texas. All right, so I've been asked to discuss whether or not to go to college for music. And I think uh, it's a complex issue. The, the first thing is, if you're going to go to college for music, you have to be prepared that, for the fact that you may not actually make a living playing music. And also the possibility that when you're done with your degree, you're not going to be able to pay back your student loan with the gigs that you do get. I did, I played in a, I'm on, I, I've done a lot of recording, it's documented, you know, I mean, my discography isn't the biggest in the world, but it's been, I've been around the block a couple times. So I was on a gig uh, in a band uh, with a younger musician who had graduated from one of the top uh, music schools in the country pianist, very good, he's still playing piano, um, and he has a record label and all this kind of stuff, he's great, he's a beautiful cat, and uh, I imagine he's in his 30s now, maybe even late 30s, he's starting to get gray hair, but in any way, he went to this school, and we're on the road, and you know, when you're on the road, you talk and you kind of learn about your bandmates well. And then we're talking, it was like, man, yeah, I went to, you know, this school I won't mention. And it cost, you know, that, that amount of money. And I was like, how am I supposed to play, pay that back? Doing piano bars? You know, so no, he had to, like, figure it out. And he started a record label and doing all this other stuff, all right? Uh, so the college thing, the colleges are going to tell you it's the ticket, you know. It's not the ticket. It's a path. And it's a good path if you are inspired to be a musician. And by that, you know, that it's really, you really feel it's your calling. And, you know, it, there, there's no other option for you. You have to be music full time or you'll die, you know. And then, yeah, you should do it. Uh, and then you work your ass off and you figure out a way, you know. Uh, but that pianist I was just talking about, he said, you know, I could have taken like half the money I spent at that school and just gone to New York and studied with who I needed to study with and learned the same thing and been doing the same thing now. You don't need a degree to be in a band. You need a degree to teach, you know, and everybody's concerned, or I should say, typically, you know, a parent, rightfully so, is interested in the success of their children and, you know, a guaranteed income is, is a very nice thing to think about, and they think that teaching is. But the teaching industry in this country has also gone downhill. There are, you know, too many teachers and not enough jobs. So, and particularly in the music industry, uh, I'm going to sound like I have a dark cloud over my head. I, I guess I kind of do, because I've seen the change. <clears throat> but the colleges are using music. Every, every college now has a jazz program. When I first went to college, I think there were three colleges in the country that had jazz programs. You didn't go to school for jazz. Uh, you just went to school, you know, basically it was classical, and learned music. And uh, so whatever. Now, every time Dick and Harry has a jazz program, and they use it to recruit students, 
you know, and they'll tell you, yeah, man, you're going to be able to open up your creativity and all this other kind of stuff and you'll be beautiful and life is good and, you know, come here. They just need this. They need the students because it's a beast that's got to be fed. You know, they, they keep building the schools up and, and building facilities and stuff. And if not enough students come, they don't get the tuition. You know, it's like just like any other business. So go to college if you really feel strongly about studying music. It's a great, great place to learn as much as possible in the least amount of time. Uh, it's not the place that you're going to learn everything. You're going to have to do a lot of work on your own. You're going to have to have your own initiative to explore things perhaps that are not taught in the school. And again, you basically, you know, you just live to, to learn about music. And the school is just one avenue. Certainly, you want to study, you know, the tradition of all musics not just the one you're in, you know, like if you go to school, like to be a jazz musician, you still want to study classical music, you know, because Bach and Beethoven, they had a lot of stuff going on. And if you don't know about it, then you can't bring that to the table. And then you're going to, there'll be something missing, you know. You have to study the recordings of the masters in the, in the jazz industry. I, there, a lot of young people, you know, I'm talking about you know, I mean, I've been on gigs with with a young person, you know, and we're going to do uh, take the A train, and I say, okay, you got the intro, and he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, you don't know this doc intro for take the A train? You know, I mean, and you're a pianist, and you have, you know, a bachelor's degree in jazz performance? That's a crime. So you haven't listened enough Duke Ellington. I mean, if you're going to play Satin Doll, and take the A-Train and stuff, you should listen to Duke Ellington. You know, plain and simple. It's kind of common sense. But a lot of times in college, those kinds of things get lost. So use your common sense. Uh, so uh, I was asked to discuss you know, my thoughts on young folks uh, today and how they can best make their way in the music industry and, and I would say uh, the first thing to do is to study your instrument and music in general as much as you possibly can and to of course practice if you don't practice just forget about it it's not going to happen uh, you have to be uh, very proficient on your instrument before you can even get started and uh, after you're proficient on your instrument, you still have to have uh, the good fortune to land with the, the people that will connect you or that you know, will take you somewhere. Uh, the music industry has changed uh, incredibly in my lifetime. And nowadays, it is extremely difficult to make a living in the traditional way as I did. I was fortunate. I, all I had to do was have a phone, and you know I was getting phone calls. There were there was a lot of work in New York. There were lots of cafes and, and restaurants and stuff like that. They all had music, and there were not so many musicians. So work was plentiful. Nowadays, especially in a large city like New York City. Uh, you know, all the universities have extensive music programs. There's lots of students. They've graduated lots of classes of professional musicians. So there's a lot of com, com, uh, a lot a, of um, uh, not com what's a competition. Thank you. A lot of competition for the performance work that is out there. Uh, so. Consequently, most of the people that I know that are, like, say, in their 30s now, uh, you know, have reinvented what it means to have a career in music. Um, and you're going to have to make your own way and find out what a career is for you. It could be, you know, making your own records, 
from start to finish, which would mean writing music. I would say uh, writing music, learning how to write songs, learning how to compose, uh, all of the disciplines involved with composition would be an invaluable tool. Uh, poetry would also be, or, or you know, uh, the uh, language arts, uh, whatever language you speak, would also be an excellent thing to uh, have command of, so that you can write uh, your whatever your vision is musically from start to finish. And then, of course, you have to probably market it yourself these days as well, unless you're extremely fortunate to have uh, a record company or a producer be interested in that. Uh, and I can't stress enough that it's e extremely tight market in that regard. Um, if you love what you're doing, it only makes sense to educate yourself as best you can in any of the aspects of the music that you can possibly uh, explore. For instance, I used to do a lot of recording sessions and I would walk into the studio with my bass and they would tell me where to set up and I would set up and play. And a lot of those recording sessions were jazz records. And I remember one time I'm playing, the piano player was talking to the engineers, you know, about what microphones they were using and where they were placing them and why. And I asked him after the session, I, I, his name was Frank, actually, yeah. and I said, Frank, why are you asking all those questions about the mics and where they're placing them and all that kind of stuff? And he said, because I want to know about that stuff because when I do my own records. And my thinking was, that's their business, where they're going to put the mic and the sound they get from my bass is all their business. And my business is just to sound the way that I sound good acoustically and to play everything well, and, it, and the recording aspect was, you know, the recording studio's problem. And f so Frank was actually very pr prescient in his approach because, you know, nowadays everybody's recording themselves. So you have to know about microphone placement and you have to study that. And you have to learn how to even use a mixing board and you're doing all that on a computer. And people are doing that in their homes, in their, in their home studios. And the, the concept of going into a studio to do a recording it has, is becoming more rare by the day. I mean, the, you know, RCA Studios in New York is gone. Uh, all those big studios are gone. Only the small ones are still around, and, and they struggle uh, because the industry has changed so much. Uh, and you can, you know, get an excellent recording in a home studio. Mm -hmm.